Recently, the news of um, the raid of um, the home of Justice Mary Odili was all over the place and uh, people were thinking it was the unknown gunmen who went there to, to, wreak, to wreak havoc and people were thinking Governor Justice Mary Odili was not in the safe end and so there were agitations from all quarters and people were thinking it was the unknown government that Nigerian Palace is known for it has gone to the house to, to do the, 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 the effect they always do in the society. So Governor Mary Odeli was in the news and people were agitating that is, is she safe? Is the family safe? Is our property safe? And from there, there were stories, build up stories up and down. And now we've seen that um, the AGF has come out to say he knows nothing about it because it was pointed at one point that he sent people there through a warrant obtained from a, a court of law to go there to raid the house of Justice Mary Audley. And so on the show this morning, we'll be discussing the house raid of. Uh, Mary Audley and how it affects the society, what is the implication on the society, what is the implication on the judiciary, and what does it pretend to Nigeria as a whole. We have two guests in the house this morning, and we have the NBA chairman, Abelkuta Branch, Mr. Camille Abolade. You're welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, thank you. And on my side here is Mr. Ola Animashaw, a public analyst. You're welcome to the program. It's nice to be in your studio. Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Yeah, well, let me start with uh, Mr. Camille uh, Abolade. Um, the uh, AGF, who also uh, the Minister of Justice, mm. has distanced himself you know, from the raid and the principal suspect that has been established as a fake you know, police officer. Mm. So, uh, but people still want to know. You know we know how they got the search warrants. Uh, the chief magistrate uh, said he was misled. And uh, I think that has really sparked debates on uh, how porous is her legal system you know, for uh, a free police officer uh, to secure such warrants and uh, name laying a siege on the House of Justice, uh, Mary Audley. So what discussion should we be having now? Uh, what, um, should this lead to certain changes in our, in our justice system as regards uh, the issuance of such warrants or the application process? What I, what I believe is that before you get a search warrant in any court, you must have, you must have filed a motion party. And if the motion party will have stated the grounds why the order should be granted, the magistrate who granted the order must have relied on the affidavit in support of that motion and will have been put there. But while she now remains, is something that is not clear to everybody. I will not say that the judiciary system or the court system is porous because she can't just give that order without the affidavit and even not even without some influence in her. And when she came out to deny or to say I was misled, a judge cannot be misled because before you give order, you look at the things before you, you look at the papers before you, before you grant that order. Maybe she had an afterthought that she had made a mistake and the order has been granted and the house was raided. I believe that was why she came out to say she was misled. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, Mr. Lani Marshall, uh, <laughs> too many questions, uh, but uh, limited answers, you know, uh, at least for now. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the, uh, Femi Falano, the human rights activist and lawyer, uh, told uh, the president, uh, Mamadou Buhari, uh, to set up an independent inquiry on Justice Odili's home invasion. Uh, I mean, 
when we have these leaders, what should we uh, be talking about now? Uh, do you think uh, this will unravel the mystery? Well, I am not so sure it will lead us to anywhere tangible, given the peculiarities of uh, Nigerian system, particularly when you look at the confusion that seems to be surrounding the scenario of Justice Odile's uh, house raid. At one point, the magistrate that granted the order, just like uh, our MBA chairman here is saying, seems to be having an afterthought. And that request couldn't have just dropped from nowhere. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So the Nigerian system is about playing out right from where the search warrant emanated from, saying I was kind of misled. Mm -hmm. Who misled who? How are we sure that at the end of the day, the people that misled her will not thwart the effort of getting to the bottom of the scenario? That is my concern. Because, like Charity was saying in her prologue, the ADF has denied knowing this unknown government. Quite unfortunate that this thing has entered our lexicon for quite some time now. Unknown government, unknown police unknown army, unknown soldier. The, the, the legend fella sang initially the unknown soldier. And the unknown soldier right from the 70s mm -hmm. seems to be coming up in different uh, perspectives in our lexicon. Unknown bandits, unknown armed men, unknown gunmen, unknown uh, policemen. Who are these unknown? Are they spirits? Ironically, some of the so-called unknown gunmen were bold enough on national TV. We all saw it. Mm. And we saw the ADF also making his uh, frantic denials that those ones were accusing him directly that he sent them yeah. on this errand. And that they had carried out some, was it 99 assignment before for him in mm. this regard? I am not being categorical. I'm only play, re rehearsing According what to the report from report. the national screen. Mm on this issue and the only defense you could hear from the ADF was that the inspector general police has set up a panel to look at this or something like that he was not really addressing the other 99 but he was saying they had discovered that he didn't send them on this mission of course the guy said he did not send them on this particular mission but that they are contractors contractors to the government or perhaps to the ADF himself on assignments possibly like this to recover loots or money or something like that. Yes, there could be contractors for the government. You have military contractors who most of us call mercenaries. Mm. They've been used before to fight mm. Boko Haram. Mm. Yes, they could be termed as unknown gunmen because for us we don't know them. But those who sent them to carry out assignments on, the, on their behalf knows who they sent. But the, the AGF uh, vehemently denied, he denied having it. any contract. Particularly uh, on this one. But he was unable. I watched him direct, listening intently. He was unable to deny the previous and the other allegation. He was only hiding on the current one that the Inspector General of Police has cleared him, so to say, but that he did not send them on this error. But those guys, permit me to say the gentlemen that went on this obnoxious assignment, were saying, he he is one, he's a well known person to them, I know them very well, that he has sent them on errands before. But he said it. Remember, he said that he, he didn't know them. Denied it. He, but he so denied it. But that's why he I said, I hope mm. we'll get to the bottom of it. Because that is the henchman, so to say, in court, of government, the attorney general, in this aspect. If he is denying vehemently, and at the end of the day you are setting up a panel, how do you get to the bottom of it? I hope those guys are safe at the end of the day. I hope you will continue to hear about them. I hope they will not be neutralized. Okay, let, let's look at the independence power given to the judiciary. In the, in the case of Justice Mary Odile now, don't you think that power has been um, brought down? And uh, we've seen so many cases of um, a raid of um, 
uh, houses of justices, uh, high court judges, and uh, it has pers persisted in Nigeria. Do you, don't you think the power given to the judiciary is being punctured at this point? And what can be done to, to rectify this power? Yes, I agree with you that the independence of the judiciary in Nigeria, to me, is only um, on paper. They are not really independent. Because if you say they are independent, like we have the, the legislature, the executive, the judiciary is not as independent as the other two arms of government. And it is very dangerous for our country, for our system of government. The reason why I say that is, the judiciary is believed to be the last hope of the common man. Mm. Somebody's rights has been trampled upon. Where do you go to? You are not expected to deal with the person yourself. You are supposed to go to court to enforce your rights, claim damages you are applicable. But when the arm of government that you, that you have run to lacks that independence, lacks the the capacity to carry out the functions, mm. then I wonder who you run to again, except you go back to God who created you. Mm. And talking about Justice O'Dilly's case again, the, she is in the highest court of the land. Mm. You start to get from Magistrate Court, High Court, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court, which is the last. And if they are independent, they are freedom cannot be guaranteed. Mm. How do you expect them to handle cases before them or to pronounce judgments and be and think that they are safe apart from the what goes on underground mm. being influenced? Yes, that is there. But what I'm saying in summary is that once their independence cannot be guaranteed, everybody is not safe. No one is safe in Nigeria. Because we are not allowed to carry guns. We are not allowed even to deal with anyone that has even offended you, even if it is manifestly clear that this person, assuming as I, on my way here, yeah, let's say somebody stopped me, slapped me, or even damaged my car, I'm not supposed to be targeted. Like the, the best I can do is report to the police, let him be arrested, let him be charged to court. But if I get to court and I can't get my right enforced, how am I safe? Mm. And to me, that's why people decide, okay, you have done this. If I have to go to court, I will go to court. Mm. Waste my mm. waste time there, waste yeah. my resources. And at the end of the day, I will not get judgment. Why can't I deal with this? Jungle justice. Mm. So jungle justice, I hope jungle justice will not uh, be the next order of the day. Okay, Mr. Olani Masharun, don't you think with the scenario that has been painted for the past few weeks now, there's some Nigerians are saying maybe Justice Mary Odili has some influence somewhere. That's why the federal government wants to puncture that power she's showing forth to in some quarters. Do you agree to that or opinion? No, anybody can have any opportunity, influence, mm. power, or capacity from any corner. Mm. She's doing her job. If you feel she's not delivering as expected, under the uh, principles of her job, it's a different thing. But if you have some hidden agenda, it's another thing entirely against her. So whatever you have against Justice Odile, why not just come out? If you want to settle a panel against her, do it. Whether, what, you see, government can be very powerful. Whatever influence anybody has from any corner, if governments want to deal with you, they will deal with you. If it is something that they have to do legitimately, why not do it in the open? In many cases, if you are looking at somebody's activities, do you have to just reach their houses just anyhow? There are ways of doing these things. If you want to accuse somebody, you must have done your findings effectively and go to the courts to let the whole world know that she has done this, and she has to be, you know, effectively sanctioned appropriately through the courts of law. You don't just take laws into your hands. You try to embarrass, or except if they are saying that they have some information that she has something in the house, 
and there must be a legitimate way of yeah, doing it. Okay. Not that we've gone to know it, and at the end of the day, the magistrate will now be denying, oh, sorry, I was misled. And that is the question, that is the problem we have here. If Odile, Justice Odile is against the laws of the land, brought her to book in the appropriate way, through due process, not on a corner. I'm happy with the MBA chairman who stayed here for his submission. The way things are going, the judiciary, the courts, is the last hope, is the hope of the common man. The last hope, so to say. If indirectly the courts have kind of been desecrated, the judiciary has been desecrated this way. What is our hope? That's why he's saying that he's afraid, he hopes that we will not end up looking at people taking laws into their hand. Mm. Because if they think those who are supposed to be custodians of the law, who are supposed to adjudicate over their issues, are now being, you know, which hunted, so to say, in court, then what becomes of the ordinary person? How safe are we in the society? Mm. Because that is the most dangerous pattern of it. If the government, yes, they may have contractors, but we want to make sure that if you have contractors, it's well uh, identified on paper. Let's know that they are mercenaries. But don't use some mercenaries to come out with hunters. Most no mercenaries are used to do some dirty jobs for the government. Mm -hmm. And this is a kind of dirty job. Do things in an appropriate, appropriate way so that people like it. My friend here, the MPA chairman, and myself, and yourself, and charity as well, will feel safe. Because if we don't feel safe, then the government must have failed in the assignment in the first instance. What's the use of saying the assignment of the government is security of lives and property? Mm -hmm. If those who are supposed to even secure us when we get to the court to save us from being you know, falsely accused or uh, imprisoned are not even saved themselves, that means any contractor can just switch us and corner us around anywhere in the, on the street, in Abelkuta or anywhere in Abuja, and say, that's the man, bring him down. You continue neutralizing people. What is the essence? Perpet to perpetuate yourself in power? Because of pecuniary gains, it's not fair on humanity. Mm. So, oh, okay. Sorry. You want, to, you want to add something? Okay, go ahead. I'm not even sure that the government stated any allegation against her. I'm not sure. In the warrant? No, there was a whistleblower. There was uh, a, the, it, 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 the, way, the way they do it normally is when you get a search warrant, it, you see, to me, you don't call it a raid. Because if you say raid, raid is in court is illegal. But if you come to my house with a search warrant, firstly, I'm supposed to search you to be sure that you are not carrying any incriminating object that you want to drop in my house. Once I've searched you and I, can't, I don't find anything on you, it is then that you can then search my own house. So what they did was wrong because some people have been planted in her home. Yeah. That's why I said, Raid is like you are forcing yourself to enter somebody's um, property, mm. and that is wrong. Mm. 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 But, <laughs> but uh, the siege, you know, remnant of uh, 2016 uh, incident, when the dead of the night, uh, the uh, residents of judicial officers uh, were raided. Uh, now, the question is 2016, now, fast forward to 2021, uh, this uh, happened recently, you know, 29th of October. Uh, is that nothing changed after that time, or there's nothing that judiciary can really do to uh, I, uh, I agree with cut you that nothing, some... I agree with mm. you that nothing changed. Mm. Because then, when it was so fresh in 2016, many people spoke against it. Even our own national association spoke against it, that this is illegal, this should not be done. But be people felt the chief judge of Nigeria then was being uh, victimized. They now zero it on him alone. You remember that he was removed. After his removal, if they had taken it up to fight for all the judges, not only him, we would have had a different scenario. And I remember one of the judges was even asked to go. Those judges that were whose houses were raided then. I don't want to mention the name I, so that I won't make a mistake. Uh, it is not of the Supreme Court, but I think um, the uh, High Court, court was high asked court. to go because he was really found guilty. And there's another one also that was also asked to go. And it, what I'm saying is some of them were found culpable. 
because they could not uh -huh. account for the money um, that was seen in their house, houses. But presently, they thought, okay, since we did it in 2016, or since it was done in 2016, and nothing tangible came out of it. Assuming a panel was set up, mm. panel investigated, panel came up with a report. I believe what happened last will not have happened because they would have felt ah, this one that we did in 2016 was condemned by people and this is the recommendation that if you want to do anything of such a case, this is the step we should follow. Take, um, so if that had been done then, they would not have repeated it this time. And I will also say that this one, like the Nigerian Bar Association, the National has said that they will see to the end of this one. I believe it will be done. But if it is done and a recommendation is made, I we conclude that having a reoccurrence will be very difficult. Okay, Mr. Allah Nimashan, let me go back to the search warrant that was taken to the House of Justice on delay. How can a Nigerian, a typical Nigerian, know that this search warrant is the authentic one? How do you differentiate the one from the the because now every everybody is denying and there was a search warrant and there was a raid in the house my sister don't let us deceive ourselves oh. with the exception of those who know the nitty-gritty of what the search warrant looks like mm. Mm. and can confirm the signature of a particular magistrate mm. you can't and know we, we don't even you know, know some magistrates yeah. you can't know it mm. until it boomerangs like this and for an ordinary citizen it cannot easily boomerang it is because this person, they say, George, who knows her onions, who people kind of are willing to speak out for. But for an ordinary person, people will just assume it's a criminal. How many people do we even know has been arrested in such a gestapo manner mm -hmm. that are legitimately done, carried out with due process, that were not actually, you know, uh, From kidnapped, the so to say or are searched by contractors because i'm very sure even the official police authorities the dss will be caught off balance to say ah so all that we have been doing some contractors have also been working alongside the us because you can't know who is who they will carry id card they will display they will flash they will tell you this and that and these guys knows they are almost in terms of uh, security apparatus. so how do you say they are contractors or they are mercenaries, not knowing that some guys are doing some other nefarious activities, bad assignments for the government underground. Mm -hmm. You can't know as a citizen. You can do. You just cannot know. That is what we are saying. That due process needs to be followed, just like my friend here has said, in carrying out these kinds of assignments, so that we will not be caught. The government will not be caught pants down. You know, I don't even know how the ADF will escape this. Hypothetically speaking, I don't know, except if they are using the superpower they have to suppress everything about the whole scenario. Well, uh, talking about uh, the superpower now, uh, the principal suspect who has been established uh, to be a fake police officer uh, said he uh, was working for him, though he didn't um, give a nod uh, for them to uh, go on that rate. Uh, but uh, the head gave us come out uh, to say, uh, to deny, he denied any involvement you know, with uh, the principal suspect. Mm -hmm. So where do we go from here? Uh, does that mean the AGF is exonerated uh, or what? Yes, an NBA has frowned you know, against this, uh, saying, yes, uh, we will see this the latter. So what's going on right now? What investigation are we looking at? Well, I believe the investigation is still going on. And it cannot be swept under the carpet, I believe. What the what MBA intends to do or is doing is to follow up the investigation to the end. You see, if somebody has done something and the person is saying I didn't do it, if he has done it, there will be pieces of evidence for you to gather yeah. and make your conclusion. Of course, the person might attempt to uh, destroy the evidence, but. To me, every evidence cannot be destroyed. Like the people that were arrested, they, they is not one, it's not two. About 14, about 14. So from them, they will still get 
okay, who sent you? How did you do it? Even the magistrate himself, if it's queried, if it's questioned, he will know some things that he will reveal. And once there is that revelation, they will go on from there. It's only if they don't want to get to the roots that they will just drop it. Mm. But to me, they, if they are serious about it, they will get it. Sometimes I wonder when police come out to say, we've arrested this, we've caught this. You wonder how do they do it? That if he's somebody who is uh, known, it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's not to me. It's, it's their job is easy to do. For instance, people used to compare EFCC personnel and police personnel. They are the same people. They are the same set of people. The difference is EFCC is well equipped for them to carry out their investigation. Meanwhile, police is not well equipped. So if they have the equipment to carry out their functions, it will be done. So they can get to the root of the matter if yeah. they want to. EGF cannot. He has denied. Yes, if he has not done it, you go scot free. If he has done it, you cannot go scot free. Right. Nobody is about it. Well, it remains to be seen how that will be proven. People problem. are even waiting on him that, okay, we will see your end. We will see your end. Mm -hmm. And this one, we will not just wait. Okay, Barrister, I'll take you back to 2016. Uh, when uh, where the houses of some judicial officers uh, were, were raided and some were found culpable. I know that in law, uh, forcefully obtained evidence could actually be tabled you know, in the court of law. So, uh, which means if I suspect you know, something and somehow I get a search warrant, you know, um, a raid can happen. So where would this really lead us? So uh, it seems this may not stop anytime soon. If, um, if forcefully obtained evidence uh, can be tabled in the court of law, because that can be classified to what happened in 2016, in which uh, some houses were raided, and eventually uh, some judicial officers were found culpable because they couldn't uh, uh, prove where uh, the money, uh, where they got the money from, kind of. Sorry, I didn't get the question. You said. Evidence is gotten forcefully. Evidence is, you know, uh, gotten forcefully. Yes. Can be tabled in the court of law. Yes. Right. So, I mean, I can classify this under that category. When, if you suspect uh, something, okay. yes. then you can go and, I mean, government can read. Yes. And get, and if they can, if they find evidence, if they can get some evidence, just like it was gotten in 2016, and some judicial officers were found you no know, culpable. You see, I will, I will not support read. Okay. I'm, I'm emphasizing and I'm maintaining it. If I, if police get such warrants mm -hmm. and the police gets to the premises where they are to execute the mm -hmm. such warrant, to me, they don't need to forcefully enter. What if the person is not willing? The person may not be willing to open the door. Mm -hmm. The evidence is believed to be in the house. Mm -hmm. Now, if the police says, open the door, yeah. and the person says, I'm not opening the mm -hmm. door. What I don't see is if you are talking about judicial officers, mm -hmm. I don't see them not opening their doors. Okay. But for ordinary Nigerians, or for ordinary someone that is not in Nigerians, that is dangerous. Because I've handled a case before. Uh, policemen went to the house, they asked the people, open your door. The person was afraid. Mm -hmm. The person saw them carrying guns. Of course, it was then these uh, SARS people, you know they don't usually wear their uniform. Mm -hmm. So he, he called, he managed to call me that there are people outside this house. They said you should open. They were claiming they were, they were from SARS over that area. But that he didn't trust them. Mm -hmm. I told him don't open. They stayed there overnight. He didn't open. They left. He was calling. He was monitoring. At a point, he said, I said, okay, now go out yourself. Once they identify, that was the second one. Once they identify, because I didn't want to believe that they had left totally. Mm -hmm. I said, once they identify themselves, trust them. Then let them come in. It took time. They came in. They didn't see anything. I believe that he was lucky. Everybody might not be lucky because we are talking about somebody who is not who doesn't who is mm. not uh, popular who is not known. So it's risky. It's risky. So raid may be. I don't want to say <laughs> should be allowed, but may be allowed in certain cases, but not 
someone who has who whose um, who status is higher. Mm. Yeah. That's why I made that comparison that a judge will normally open. But you said for an, a, an ordinary person, yes, it's dangerous for an ordinary person. Ordinary person, they may even plant something in the house for him. But because of the the society that we have, Nigeria in particular, that we don't follow the law, we don't do the uh, carry out due process. So it is 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 dangerous. To me. So you're saying there's no gun for force, even. Uh, no. Even if they search warrants, and if the suspect refuses to uh, open the door, for example, no, the, the police can exercise uh, the, some force. Yes, okay. in limited force. Okay. In limited, they can break. They can break the door. Okay. okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't seem like a limited <laughs> force. Uh, no, breaking right. the door is, is okay. Is not not to start shooting. Okay. Oh. To gain access. Just so, to gain access. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not to not to even use a uh, bomb to break the to break the door. No, okay. that's why I said limited, limited force. Okay. Okay, we are learning. You see, you see, in this instance about the judge, uh, or justice so delay, I, I, I'm not saying that she's innocent, or whatever they are, you know, saying about her. Uh, I'm not saying our judges are saints. Mm -hmm. Neither am I a saint or ordinary other other ordinary Nigerians. Mm. But what we are saying is if you have anything against anybody, do it according to the due process. And the person like our you know friend here is saying is not complying, there could be limited force. Mm. Ap after all we've seen it outside the country. Mm -hmm. they, they have some things they can use to break the door mm -hmm. if you are not opening I have, I've witnessed it before. Mm. So it's not a big deal as far as I'm concerned in terms of getting entrance, but what we don't expect is that they should start shooting or destroying uh, things unnecessarily. I hope in Nigerian balance they will not plant <laughs> in the house like he was trying to say. But by and large, nobody is saying that all the judges or our judges are, are saints or they are all criminals or they are all fraudulent so that we don't commit fallacies here. Mm. But whoever goes against the law should be taken care of in the deal. Okay, Mr. Nanimashan, I'll yeah. still stay with you. Now, denial and counter denials everywhere. Those suspects are saying it is from the, the, the directive is from the AGF, AGF and uh, the some are saying they are being sent by the AGF, mm -hmm. but the AGF is saying, no, I didn't send you. Now, what does that portend to Nigerians? and uh, the outside war world if like a caliber of um abubakar malami can be caught in that case and uh, you deny and those people you sent are saying you sent us what kind of person is um, malami and what kind of person are those people being sent are they saying they are not uh, let me not let me not pay except to. except if those uh, accused oh. of reading the house Without, we, I don't want to go, go wrong against what he's saying. Exactly. That we should not use the word read. But what they had gone to do is kind of reading. Mm. Whatever we want to call it, the nomenclature. Except if they are name droppers that are looking for a way to escape being, you know, sanctioned. That's why they are dragging in the ADF. But that there's a the journalist only, the amongst them. There is a journalist amongst those suspects. Who said um, he was informed. He was informed to come and uh, cover. To come and cover. And he was, yes. looking, he was looking for a big story. He was looking for a scoop. So yeah, he yeah. Said, yeah, exactly. Yes. Whoever sent them is a master of this game. Maybe I should say a master in quote okay. of this mm -hmm. game. He makes sure the press is embedded mm -hmm. in the operation. He makes sure he has enough you know, uh, people to handle it and he must have been supplied with arms and ammunition. They couldn't have gone bare head and dead. Where did they get their supplies from? Were they supposed to have such supplies in carrying out such assignments? Are they just investigator or are they paramilitary or military? Mm -hmm. So it's not just about you sent us and I didn't send you. We have to look at how they get their the materials they work with, how the journalist was invited. Somebody must have invited the journalist. Mm -hmm. Except if he's being mischievous and he wants to go down unnecessarily. When it gets to the point, he will mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. Because the police are also interested in it. But like I said the other time, except if the superpower factor is utilized in this instance, I have my fear if the AGF will not go down with it. 
Well, uh, Barista, those who laid uh, the siege uh, were uh, joined Okay, before from... we continue, Moses, we want to have this little break. When we'll come back, we'll continue with two, the two gentlemen we have in the studio, and the topic we'll be dealing with is the raid of the Home of Justice on Delhi. We are looking at the implications and the way forward. So, we'll catch up later. <laughs> That was a commercial break we went for, and uh, we are welcome back to the program. We'll continue with our topic, which is the on-break of justice or delay. We were looking at in the, the implication and the way forward. Uh, we were talking mm. with um, Ola Anima Shao, looking at what the outside world will, will see looking at this case. What uh, do you think will be their own opinion on this case? You know, counter denial here and there, Malami is saying, I didn't send, I didn't send you. And uh, the suspect are saying, you sent us. So what do you think the other countries all over will think of, of course, Nigeria? Of course, the outside world will be interested in knowing where the whole thing will end. Even though they may not have a direct uh, impact on what is happening as regards uh, Justice Odile's uh, house raid, in quote. It's not something that speaks well of Nigeria mm -hmm. because it's like we are not following the normal protocol in doing things, and uh, it, it sells us in a bad light. Mm -hmm. And uh, denier here, counter denier here, you wonder why is this so? And sometimes you want to ask, what is the motive? What is the motive? Initially, people were looking at uh, maybe because Justice Odile is on the line to succeed in uh, the chief just uh, of. Uh, uh, what, what do you call it, the, mm, the Justice, Justice uh, uh, of the Federation. True. And uh, somehow it's been established that mm. uh, age does not even favor her in that regard. So you want to ask, what could likely be the motive for this? Mm. Has she been investigated to a point that she's been confirmed to be fraudulent? Mm. Or is it political? Maybe my friend can bail me out. I don't know. What <laughs> I think, I think that there. offer <laughs> should be spelled out. Uh, yeah. Yes, that's why I said, you know, I've said it earlier on that um, they didn't put forward any allegations against mm. her. Uh, and even in the judiciary, we, we have the, uh, the disciplinary committee under the National Judicial Commission. It is not the function of AG or the executive or the legislature to discipline a judicial officer. Mm. A petition could have been written and forwarded to the yeah, Judicial Service Commission. The that petition the against justice, suddenly? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. that should have been the first thing, rather than reading. Because this one, to me, there is no, the, no evidence, no evidence mm -hmm. brought forward against her. No but, allegation but brought forward. But a whistleblower uh, said. A yes, uh, whistleblower can say anything. So, mm -hmm. an illegal activity <laughs> going on in that particular residence. Whistleblower can say anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's even look at it. They entered the house. What did they find? They entered. They didn't find anything. Mm. That's why I agree. Petition should have been written. If they've done it, that's, that's what we call due process. Mm. I'm not against whistleblower saying, okay, I saw this, but it must be concrete. That is why we have, under our law, the offense of defamation. We are not going there. So nobody can just wake up and say, okay, mm. they found something on me. When, they, when nothing is on me, mm. I could go back and sue them. So petition, to the Judicial Service Commission should have been the, the appropriate mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. against Justice Odile. But uh, the other suspects you know, were drawn from various uh, professional backgrounds. Uh, there was even a lawyer, you know, uh, a journalist uh, who said he was looking for a scoop and uh, you know, security operatives. Uh, could they also be classified as usurpers? I mean, claiming, looking at what the journalist said, that he didn't know anything, he was just well, called, called yeah, you know, and he was looking for a big story. It's possible, it's possible. You see, you journalists, you say, okay, who breaks the news first? I want to be the first person that breaks. So that explains why the journalists may have agreed to be there with them. And I will not rule it out that they, they, they could have promised them a huge amount of money. Even if they've not been given, they could have promised them. Or it's possible they've been given, okay, we are going to carry out this assignment. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. They, must have, they could have promised them anything. 
that could have made them to say, okay, I will participate in it. And considering the status of the victim, that's okay. That, that, even, that can even make us to conclude that the AGF that is denying may just be denying for denying sake. Because if it is an ordinary person that says, okay, let's go and do this thing, I don't think that would be possible. Without somebody who is influential to have gathered them together, let's do this together. Even if the age is not involved, it could be somebody could be fronting for him that look, I'm representing somebody I cannot mention, but I assure you, we are going to do it. Nobody, nothing will happen to us. We will not be arrested. We will be highly compensated. That could have pushed them to do it. Uh, Allah, okay. Uh, okay, you want to uh, nothing is impossible in this instance. And I've told you, whoever sent these 14 guys, I suppose there are 14 on this errand, he must be a master of the game. It couldn't have been his first time, neither could it have been the first time for those people that went to do the assignment. They are experts in the game, and the master sent them on the usual errand. That's my conclusion, hypothetically, temporary, mm. on the issue. Until we get to the bottom of it, if hopefully, if and when we get to the bottom of it, if we are able to, if it's not covered up, covered up at the end of the day. But I think it will help us in navigating properly in the future how things like this will sure, happen, yeah, how it goes on in government sometimes, what could possibly happen. And for us to also be on the lookout to say, are these ones the new governmental agents or operatives? Mm. So in essence, they are just creating something in our mind now that we may find it difficult to understand if the person accosting me, asking me a question, is an appropriate agent of government. Mm, trust that, issue. That, that is not a fake person, mm. that is not a mercenary, is not a contractor. Okay, in the report we read also, we saw that um, address, addresses of um, uh, the Justice Audley and the other one presented by those suspects were different. Yes. So, can we say it is a case of mistaken identity or raiding the home of Justice Audley? I'm not sure. I think one address, Audley's address was supposed to be 29 or so. Mm -hmm. The address they claim was 31. How could they have left? 31 is different from 29. It's not as if it's 28 and 29 or 27 mm -hmm. and 29. It must have been deliberate. Don't let us beat around the bush. It's a strategy. They have, they will have different ways of doing these things. Just put the one on the paper. The person you are, you know, uh, reading, in quote, may not even have time to look at their, the number of their house. It's just the you are flashing. But because they are unfortunate, they, are, they were meeting somebody who knows her onions and was able to say this is number 29 you were you supposed to go to 31. so except if those who did some preliminary investigations for them could not differentiate between house 29 and house 31 before they went to get the uh, uh search warrant mm. so something is missing there mm. and i don't think it's a mistake it could have been deliberate. It could be a These cover guys, I said, master of the game sending experts to go and do a nefarious job. Well, uh, Leah, uh, as it were, I think this has exposed uh, the uh, judicial system, kind of, uh, because uh, now uh, we, uh, we're talking about uh, the chief magistrate who later uh, came out to say uh, was misled. Now, what, from your own standpoint, you know, what legal reforms uh, should we be talking about now? Um, I, I believe, you know, when, I, when we started, I said, for you to get the order, you must have filed the paper. Mm. Um, motion, of course, it says party, that you don't serve the other side. The name of the house, the address of the house, the name of the person must have been stated on the uh, court papers. And deliberately in this one, they didn't include the name of the person they were going to read. Just the address. Uh, just the address. And that could have even, if the name had been put on the paper, I'm not sure the magistrate would have gone ahead to make that. Mm. I'm not sure. It's possible the magistrate would have consulted um, 
higher authority also, so, like the chief judge of the division where mm -hmm. she is like, look, this thing came to my table now, what should I do? Even before the assignment of the case, mm -hmm. it's possible they will have raised questions. So, going forward, what I would suggest is there should be a caution, like in the normal uh, court processes where yes. you, will have, you must have heard about uh, granting of injunctions. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, whenever an injunction is granted, it means the other person who is to be sacked cannot do anything to maintain status quo. And there have been calls that, especially during the political era, stop granting unnecessary injunctions. Mm -hmm. That is a reform on that side. So this one also, I will also call for a reform that. Before granting um, a warrant. such warrants, mm -hmm. There should be a caution. If possible, inspect the place or ask for more information. Mm -hmm. What have you suspected to be in the house that you want to read? Who is the person you want to read? Even when directives are given from higher authority? Yes. Like instruction was given in this case by a higher authority. Mm -hmm. And that higher authority is denied. The higher authority is denied. So I'm saying, even if it is higher authority, I should still be, caution should still be exercised and do some investigations. The person whose house is going to be raided may not be, may, may have slept, may not know that they are coming. And this thing can be done discreetly, even by the judge, by the police. They will do that. Then we will now have a sane society. We will not, the, the occurrence, the reoccurrence of this will be prevented. Because we say, going forward. It was done in 2016. Mm -hmm. it was, this is 2021. Who knows what will happen next year if reforms are not made, if caution is not put in place. Don't just grant it, like I make reference to granting of injunctions. Okay, Mr. Mm -hmm. Marshall, recently uh, the whistle blowing policy in Nigeria was brought up so that uh, you know, government can be everywhere and you have to know what is happening everywhere. So the issue of whistle blowing now the case of the Justice Ordinary emanated from a whistleblower. And that whistleblower now, we don't know what will happen to the person. We don't know if it's a she or a he. So we don't know what will happen to the person. Should Nigeria look at the policy of whistleblowing again, knowing that there are a lot of fake information given out and it is misleading those people in the, in the higher places? Thank you very much. You see, the concept and principle of whistleblowing is a good one. Like you said, government is no spirit. The government cannot be everywhere, knowing this is happening here. Yeah, it's, it's, even the police, that's why you say policing is a joint effort. It's not, the police can't be everywhere, and they don't know everything. It's your job as a good citizen to do some things to help your environment. Now, the fact that there is a whistleblowing policy does not necessarily mean that everything that was brought out as an information so the appropriate agency will be taking hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. They will have to look at it to make sure there's credibility in the information. So even as of now, not every whistleblower is or will whistleblower is compensated. Some will be fake, some will be erroneous, misconception. But how many have they come out to tell us that oh, a whistleblower can't is this is that? That is their assignment. Mm -hmm. It is the end result that we are interested in. So not every whistleblower will be compensated. It depends on the credibility of what you are bringing on board. And uh, it is for the government and the appropriate agencies to do the needful on every information that comes across to them to make sure that they don't just unnecessarily you know, uh, embarrass the uh, law-abiding citizens or have a misconception that could uh, be very, very injurious mm -hmm. at the end of the day to the person being you know, mm -hmm. accused. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad policy to say you are using it. It's not peculiar to Nigeria anyway. We bought it, brought it from other countries. And uh, it's just a way of giving incentive to people who could give information. Mm -hmm. But then the risk is that it's most likely that those who have been accused or who is uh, in line of crossfire may come back to which hunt, or his people may come back to which hunt the whistleblower. So it's always good to keep the identity of the whistleblower secret.
And most often, I've heard about a, a couple of whistleblowers that had to run away from Nigeria <laughs> because it's very dangerous. But then, when you see things, you've got to talk. You've got to say it. Are you saying it in the interest of the country or are you saying it because of personal interest? That's another thing. Of course, the incentive is there. You want to make money from what you are giving out to the government, but you have to make sure that it is genuine, it is true, it's a fact, it is credible, so that you don't mislead. But where you mislead, there should be sanction. That's the way I see it now. There should be sanction for those who deliberately want to mislead the government into taking actions against innocent people. And if, just like if the information is credible, they should be rewarded. If it is false, they should be sanctioned. So that we we'll put, we'll put a line there so that people will not be accused unjustly. And they should keep their identity safe. Okay. So that well, there, <laughs> in this case, it seems that the whistleblower uh, raised a false alarm. Now, Mr. Oladim Marshall talked about you know, sanctions. Uh, what kind of punishment you know, could be meted out to uh, this uh, whistleblower? Uh, well, um, the offense can be classified under, the, under criminal law. And there are, uh, you know, I said, even apart from government prosecuting the person, the, the victim or the alleged victim can also file a civil action. There is criminal uh, libel and there is civil libel against the person. So it's, it's apart from monetary compensation, it also uh, entails uh, a prison term, a prison term for somebody who falsely accused a person or falsely gives information. That is, that is not true. So that's a sanction. I, I, don't, I know there is a particular term of imprisonment that the person will face. But Mr. Lord Marshall, it seems uh, whistleblowing is uh, quite risky because if you could be saw something and eventually, uh, maybe somehow, uh, the suspect uh, knew um, he, or, he or she was seen and the evidence has been it's moved been and the police couldn't from. just find the evidence. Yeah. Uh, yes, you saw something mm. and you, <laughs> you blew the whistle, yeah. but nothing was found that we've heard from the lawyer. Yeah, such person or such whistleblower will be severely dealt with. Well, well it's quite unfortunate. Uh, if you want to carry out such an assignment, you must be sure of what you are going into. If you know you are sure something has entered the house or something is going on that you are sure of, he, like you added, you will say, if you want to carry out such assignment, that means you must be vigilant yeah, enough to make sure that, and that thing has gone out. You make sure that <laughs> you make it an assignment, whether from the office or at home. Maybe it's a security man, maybe it's the driver. Anything can happen. Don't assume that those guys don't see what you are doing except if they just want to keep quiet. Most people that carry out these things that gives information are those who are close to them. They know their movement. It could be the Yali Oko, if it were to be outside Nigeria in the Western world. Those old retirees that you see sitting down, sipping their coffees outside, in, outside Nigeria, because they are all caught in, they don't have fenced environment like we do here, running away from bandits. It's an open apartment, it's a lace, you can see through when they are cooking in their kitchen, see them what they are doing. So you will sit down as a pensioner, mostly the women, they'll be sipping their coffee in the morning. They know everybody in the neighborhood. They know what goes on all around there. When they see something strange, they'll call the police. That I saw this guy is going here and there, blah, blah, blah. And they will look at it. They may, and the response team is always very, very you know, quick. They may come across you before you get to the metro line mm. and say, Mister, what are you doing in this environment? Blah, blah. And the first thing you'll ask for is your identity. Because once they get your identity, they get your social security number. And they're able to do a lot of things about your, where you're coming from, but your workplace, and everything. Is the so the policy really working and so far? It should be working, except if it's not being used appropriately. It should be working. Uh, if not, they wouldn't have been recovering what they have been recovering one way or another. It's not only their capacity to investigate. Mm -hmm. Somebody somewhere must have given them information as to what this man might have stolen or something this man might have done while in power or in his office, the abuses he might have committed or what he's doing within the, his house. After all, we saw somebody that had a whole house outside uh, in the north with an AC, with a vault and all those stuff. Somebody must have given them information as to that. As mm. to that. He had an AC there to keep the money fresh. <laughs> and we, we've heard about those who have, have used their, buried their own in the graveyard, some in the septic tank, some in the overhead tank, 
So information comes, it is for the appropriate agency to sift through, to see that this information is okay, and they can go on to do their thing. But don't assume that uh, whoever is giving the information is just far, far, far away. It's somebody that is usually close by, that knows your movement in and out. He knows you have a house there, you have an AC there for your money in the vault, and nobody is staying there. Mm. You only come to deposit the money and go back. Okay, as we wrap, uh, wrap up now, Mr. Bolade, can we, can we sideline the political angle of the husband of um, Justice Odili from all of this? Can we say uh, people, people who, whoever that is fighting Justice Odili is fighting her because her husband is um, politically inclined and uh, he might have something to do in future that the wife might be called in and used at some point. Well, do you I, see that way too? Well, I would just say that that cannot be ruled out. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen in Nigeria. It cannot be ruled out. Justice Odili is not a politician, mm -hmm. but she is associated with a politician. So it's possible they, they, they want to deal with the husband mm -hmm. indirectly and say, okay, let's traumatize this family. Let's create um, a scandal around them. It is possible. Mm. It cannot be ruled out. Mm. They are not in the same political parties. They are in one is PDP and APC is in government. So we cannot rule it out. Okay. As we go, Alani Marshall, what is your word for the federal government and everybody that is involved in this case? And what should we do looking forward? I want to appeal to all Nigerians, including the government and the appropriate agencies that whatever we want to venture into, whatever we want to do in life, we should do it in the interest of humanity. Know that whatever you do today, posterity will never ever forget or forgive you if it is against humanity. Mm. Let's bear it in mind that continuous continuity in governance and continuity of humanity, survival of humanity is dependent on partly on what you do today mm. because nature abhors of vacuum and neither will nature or humanity forgive or forget we will always remember your role in the future okay uh, mba chairman what is your last word for the people well my last word would be that government should be mindful of the roles of each arm of government when we were talking, we talked about the independence of the judiciary. I would want government to ensure that that independence of the judiciary is really um, guaranteed and affirmed so that when people have cause to go to court, they know that, okay, when they get to court, they will find justice. And even those coming to Nigeria to invest will think that, okay, if I go to Nigeria, am I safe in Nigeria? If something happens and I go to court, will I have justice? So government should think of that, that mm. those watching us are also looking at the various policies okay. and how our think, government uh, operates. That's a good Thank place you. to leave it. So, so uh, many thanks, uh, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Kamil Aboladi, the NBA chairman, Abiy Kuta Branch, and Mr. Ola Anima Shaun, a public and analyst. Yes, okay. Thank you for coming. And dear viewer, we must also thank you for allowing us to be a part of your morning. This is where we draw the curtain on today's edition of New Dawn. We see you again next week. Do have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.